This week, we're in the beautiful province of Newfoundland and Labrador, fly fishing the Gander River for Atlantic salmon. These hard fighting and acrobatic fish are one of my absolute favorites. The Gander River boasts returns of 25,000 Atlantic salmon each spring. It's been said that hooking into one of these silver bullets is a true test of your angling abilities. Got him. Nice one too, right? Yeah. And I can't wait to be put to the test. I'm Mark Melnick. Stay tuned for this big fish adventure right here on the new Fly Fisher. Absolutely fantastic. The new Fly Fisher is supported by Gander River Outfitters, Orvis Fly Fishing, Scientific Anglers. Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada, I'm in for a treat this week as I am the guest of Gander River Outfitters, a beautiful full-service facility located on the northeastern coast of Newfoundland near the city of Gander. Flowing into Gander Bay on Newfoundland's northeast coast is the 37 mile long Gander River. The Gander River has an annual run of wild Atlantic salmon that has increased steadily to over 25,000 fish. This is nothing short of remarkable. On this trip, I'm lucky to have the knowledge of a variety of guides. And once settled in, I head out onto the river with guide and good friend, Mitch Head. A unique feature provided by the lodge is the vessel we're fishing from, known specifically as a Gander Riverboat. This boat was designed for the fast currents of the Gander River. Very stable and easy to fish from. We begin our Atlantic Salmon Adventure, literally a 30 second boat ride from the lodge at Home Pool. Mitch, we've seen a couple of fish come through this run and it looks like they're, they're not jumping, but they're porpoising. Are those catchable fish? Yes. Usually what I find is that when you get the fish that are jumping is the ones that are moving, shooting on through, but right. ones that are porpoising usually holding. They're holding, they're coming up, they're grabbing some stuff or they're, they're just checking things out or what have you, but they're catchable. Yeah. Okay. So if they're jumping in the air, they're moving, chances are you're not gonna get them. Don't chase a jumping fish. Don't chase a jumping fish. If they're porpoising, you got a shot at them. Yeah. When fishing for Atlantic salmon, there are two types of rise forms to become familiar with. The first rise form indicates a fish that is moving through the run and is unlikely to be taken. This is when the fish jumps clearly out of the water and lands with a large splash. The second rise form is far more subtle. You likely only see a bulge on the surface or possibly a fin or back exposed. This is the rise form that will be more likely to indicate an active feeding salmon, a catchable fish. Though it's believed that salmon don't eat when they're in the rivers, we witnessed nymphing fish with our underwater cameras. Oh, got him. You got him? Yes. <laughs> so we were really really having these flies fly through the the run and and mitch suggested that maybe they were going too quickly 
And to do a technique where you cast out, throw an arm mend upstream, let the line come tight, and then follow the fly down on a tight line. And that's what happened here. This fish, it, the, the fly was slow enough that it, as Mitch said, hangs in his face a little longer, such that you've got a shot for him to react to it. And that's what happened with this, with this salmon. Fresh fish, looked like a fat one. That's a nice, beautiful fish. Uh, is he? Yeah, he's out. Out again. <laughs> now, when fighting salmon in current, you tr you got to try to get him out of it as quickly as you can. Get him in the soft water. Yep. So if they go left, you pull right. The current gives them the advantage. And believe me, I need all the help I can get right now. We saw the net. Nice! Ah, the shower to boot. Good job. Nice, nice. Net job, man. So I believe one of the reasons that I was able to catch and release that salmon was because of the advice that Mitch gave me on how to slow down my fly presentation so it's not whipping across a fast water current. Um, when you make your cast across 45 and down, do a sort of an upstream mend with your rod and wait for that line to come tight. You can feel the line come tight in the current and then you dictate the speed at which the fly swings across the run by how fast you bring your rod tip back to your 90 degrees. And uh, that seemed to slow it down enough, Mitch, that that fish wasn't, it was hung in the fish's face long enough that it, it decided to eat. When you got a fast moving current, it helps give them a bit more time to look at it. Yep. Despite tough conditions, I had a great first day on the Gander River. It's important to remember that Atlantic salmon fishing is not necessarily a numbers game, and after such a spectacular battle today, I could hardly wait to feel another adrenaline rush tomorrow. The lodge is on the lower river, Mitch, uh, which means there's two different things going on. Number one, it can be a tidal fishery, and for this year, the water is really low. It's very low, but uh, fortunately, there's still lots of fish showing. And yes, it is a tidal fishery, up as far as one of the pools, just up above the camp there. So when we get high tides, we see an influx of a lot of fish. So high tide was 6.30 this morning. It's about 7.30. It's starting to drop. We're going to hit the water and see what we can do. Let's go. All right. When Atlantic salmon first arrive in the river, they wish to migrate up for spawning. They initially hold in the estuary waters, which is often an ocean bay. These waters are usually brackish water, which are a combination of salt and fresh water mixed together. Here, the salmon will acclimate their bodies to prepare for the transition to breathing in fresh water. This transition can often take a few days to happen. As the tide comes in and floods the bay, the salmon will use the rising waters to move into the river and begin their ascent. They usually do not move up a river from salt water when the tide is dropping. The only reason the salmon will not move up river has to do with water levels. If the river is too low or warm, the salmon will not begin their migration. However, even with low water in the river, salmon will sometimes still move up river and take refuge in deep pools or runs. Their hope is that river conditions will improve, usually brought on by rain upriver. If the salmon do move upriver and find conditions are not ideal for their migration, they will sometimes actually drop back downriver and out into the ocean again. Here they will wait better river conditions before trying to ascend. This doesn't happen very often, but when it does, usually river conditions are severe. Most of the time, Salmon will just hold in deep river pools and await rising water before beginning their ascent again. Here is a photo taken in April of this year, and this photo taken during our visit. Quite the difference.
With the water being so low, we changed our approach, moving quickly from unproductive pools in search of active fish. So Mitch, in a couple of days, we're going to have a full moon here. Um, what do you predict is going to happen with the, uh, with the tides and with the fish? Well, the tides are going to get very, very high. And normally on a full moon, you get uh, a lot of fish coming in the river. Mm -hmm. You get a, a lot bigger run than you would normally see. So it's a good time to come when there's a full moon. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Always, anywhere. Ooh, that was a good fish. That was a nice fish. With no luck in the morning, we decided to head back to the lodge for a bite to eat and to come up with a plan for the afternoon. After lunch, I had the chance to speak with father and son, Ian and Sam Tucker, about their love for salmon angling and experience here at Gander River Outfitters. I started fishing, what, three years ago? Three years ago? And what did you start fishing for? Uh, three, we started fishing for salmon. We started Northwest River in Terra Nova. What do you think about fishing salmon? Is it fun? Yeah, it's, it's I like to be at it, but just not for certain people, I guess. Haven't had, haven't had much luck yet, but hopefully we can get one this afternoon. The Gander River and this, this, this lodge, and is this a place where you would like to come back? This, this lodge, it's a great place. River's amazing. Boats are perfect for the water this year. But I, I would definitely come back here again, yes. Oh, it's so important to me to see kids like Sam out on the rivers. Uh, you know, I think back, like I fished with my dad as a kid. And uh, it's so great. And everywhere we go, like I take him out and everywhere we go on the rivers, it seems like everybody stops and wants to talk to us because they see Sam and it's like, oh, how old is he? How long has he been fishing? Oh, has he ever caught one? Like, oh, and they're, you know, it's great for me because we get a lot of tips that way too because everybody wants to see him get a fish. But uh, no, I mean, it's fantastic. I, you know, I hope, I want to see more. I'd love to see more kids doing it. I mean, it's a break from the technology. It's uh, outdoors, like it's fresh air. It's, you know, I think it's so important for kids, right? This place is amazing. This is our first time here. Gander River Outfitters is beautiful. Won't be our last time, I don't think. I mean, the lodge, the guys, Matt and everybody, I mean, they're, they're, they're so knowledgeable. The guys know exactly where the fish are. Like, I mean, they say Sam rolls one today and it was because he followed Matt's instructions. You know, cast over here, let your fly swing this way, just behind that rock. I mean, the guys know where the fish are and the facilities here are phenomenal. I mean, it, it is beautiful, really beautiful. As we made our way back out on the river, we finally saw fish moving in. It had been a long wait. Fish. That was him, right? Same spot? No, on that seam. Okay. Woohoo! Just after lunch, we, uh, <laughs> nice gross, nice jumper. We're playing the up incoming tide and uh, we didn't get anything on the outgoing tide this morning. Um, and I'm sure Mitch has some ideas as to why that might be, but we've got a fish on the incoming tide, which means that, you know, the, the water's coming up and there's more fish coming in from the ocean. So he's tied on a Lady T, which is a personal tie named after his daughter. And that was about eight swings through and Rows of fish, and now we got one on. Try to get this fish into the soft water. Nice grab, Mitch. <laughs> and they're lively, eh? Yeah. Still green. That fly just pops right out, barbless as always. Shh. 
Shit, maybe I should have fought him another five minutes or so, huh? Uh, that's good for the fish. Yeah, it's great for the fish. Get him in quick. Fantastic girls. Nice fish. All right, that was an awesome fish. Awesome fish. Sometimes you have to put some work in for them, huh? Yeah, <laughs> all morning. But the tide's coming in now, so what's happening? Well, as the tide starts rising, the fish are wading out in the bay, uh -huh. and there's low tide, and as it starts rising, they'll start coming up with it. Right. And, well, that brings in fresher fish, new to the river, or at least fairly right. new. So high tide tonight is 628. Yeah. So they, we should have a flush of fish coming in basically all afternoon. All well, afternoon. <laughs> That's sweet. That's great. I want to be able to control the speed of my fly as it swings across multiple speeds of currents here on this run. And the way I'm doing that is throwing a big upstream mend in in the fast water so that it, the, the line slowly bellies over into, uh, into the shoreline. But what happens if a fish hits right as you make your mend and you're at the extent of your arm? Well, you know what? In this fast moving water, it's not a huge issue because all you need to do is either flick your wrist upstream or gently lift. So you make your mend, fish eats, you do this, or the fish eats and you just gently lift. The fish will generally set the hook itself, but you need to make sure that you keep that line tight by either flicking your wrist upstream or just gently lifting your rod tip. It was clear the fish were moving in and I wasn't the only one who was benefiting. Just downriver from us, other guests were also hooking into their own salmon. Nice one too, looks like. He's lucky to never last them in. That is a good fish. Oh yeah. Mitch's prediction was true. There are a pile of fresh fish coming into the river from Gander Bay. Some a little too close for comfort. It scared the <laughs> fish, never give up, right? That's salmon fishing for you. Never ever give up. Just coming in, last couple of casts of the day, put a a green bug on and uh, skating it under the surface of the water and uh, salmon came up and ate it. It's pretty remarkable to be able to see the eats. They're just violent. I haven't seen this fish yet though. No. Good job. Nice stab. Look at the how dark this fish is on top. Wow. That's a thick fish, man. All right, let's take a look at this thing. Beautiful Atlantic. Nice hen. And we can let her go. How do you like that? Look at the purple. She's absolutely gorgeous. Just a fantastic, fantastic specimen. And to take it on a wet fly, a wet bug, great. Ready, darling? Way you go. What a great fish. We are looking forward to the tide to peak in hopes of bringing in some fresh fish from the ocean this evening. We head back into the lodge for an expertly prepared dinner by Chef Gary Callahan. We headed out after dinner in hopes of a little more action. However, we came up empty. This just built up the anticipation for my day tomorrow.
This is Thomas Newman, another guide here at Gander River Outfitters. Uh, Thomas, it's just after lunch, low tide, but it's also the day before the full moon. What do you expect to happen? I expect uh, some fresh fish to come in on the rising tide and we should see the fishing pick up. Right, so the, the, the full moon means it's going to be the highest tide of the month. Highest tide which of means month, yeah. there's more water coming in, which means there should be more fish. fish. It's just like a rainfall, right? Fish move with the high water. Right. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's see. We've seen some fish jump coming in. Um, they've already started to come in as the tide's going up. So let's see if we can actually catch some salmon this afternoon. Yeah, okay. sounds good. There's going to come a time when you're fishing a hitched fly in a run where you're not going to be able to see that V-wake. You're not going to be able to see that fly skittering across the surface. And that's okay. What you want to do is you want to fish the rise at that point, which means you kind of have to defocus your eyes and just sort of scan widely the pool or the run. And if there's anything that looks unnatural or different, you will see it gently lift to set the hook. Hook sets are free. If you see something that looks out of the ordinary, it might be a fish, it might not. But if it is that salmon of a lifetime, you do not want to miss it. See that Mark? Nope. Where? You know, it's right where the V closes in and meets okay. each other. Yeah. Straight over in the it's... current coming down from that rock in the middle. Okay. So not as far as you were passing there all the way, just... But more enough, if I hit it more than a 45, I can hit that. Yeah. About eight or 10 feet farther than what you just done. Yeah. Little guy. <laughs> Now, is a porpoising fish catchable, do you think? Or? I find, I, I like seeing them do that rather than jump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jumping, they're moving, right? Yeah, it seems like they hang around when they're doing that. No, see? See yeah. that one? Yeah. That was just two feet from my fly. Yeah. So that's, he's sticking around there, that tells me. He's gonna hang out there for a bit, maybe. If it's the same one, it might have been two. That might have been a different fish, but. Nope. <laughs> He's a big fish, though. He was right on the inside of that rip. Yeah. He jumped over my fly line. Here on the new Fly Fisher television show, we always keep it real. Although there was lots of fish jumping, I only managed to get one rise. Thomas explained to me that this may be because the rain moved in and caused the fish to start moving directly through the pools and further upstream. This is the reality of salmon fishing. We headed back to the lodge to recharge, ready to start tomorrow anew. Oh, see it that time? No. You can't see that? No. It just pumping the water, that's all. Oh, you see it that oh, time. I saw it that time. Yeah. I'm just glad they're still here. <laughs> Work it down slow, there should be fish. All Anywhere the, through here, right? All the way back down through there, yeah. I still think there's one right in front of that rock, too. Unless that one sort of moved over every time uh -huh. I came for it. Hey, <laughs> sweet! Told you so. It's coming right at me. <laughs> so we've been waiting for today. Hey, Mitch, the full moon is tonight, and uh, 
all the fish from the bay have pushed up, should have pushed up. We are here having some, yow, <laughs> having some fun last night, just fun fishing, prospecting, and you moved a bunch of fish, didn't you? Yeah, right here in this exact spot. I'd say 10 different fish all in this little area right here. They're gonna be lively too, because they're right out of salt water. Right, right out now. of the salt, yeah. yeah. So I've got a, uh, a number eight rod here with a weight forward floating line, um, also a number eight, and a 12 foot, eight pound leader. Um, <laughs> and of course, being in Newfoundland, all flies are barbless. We rose this fish probably three times before I was able to see the eat. It's not a giant, but they do fight. It is lot of it, yeah. yeah. So fresh. Nice grab, man. Good job. Thank you, sir. Nice, quick release, way it goes. Sweet fish. Now, first fish of the day, five minutes in. Yeah. Full moon tonight. So they should be pretty fantastic. No, I think it will be. All right. When targeting Atlantic salmon on a wet fly that's hitched, one of the keys to effective fishing for these fish is to make sure that your fly is fishing as much as possible. <laughs> well, what does that mean? Basically, when you make your cast, an unweighted fly is gonna sink immediately. That means it's not fishing. What you want is that fly to be on the surface, creating that V wake with the riffle hitch as early as possible once it hits the water. Well, how do you do that? Two ways. Number one is make sure that when you're making your initial cast that you're 45 degrees down and no further up to you than possible. That will ensure that you have a straight line when the fly line hits the water and the current will keep that fly up high early. Now, if there is any movement in your, in your fly line or there is any belly or bow, a way that you can uh, get that fly raised up in the water column is simply by using the tip of your rod. Now, when you make your cast and you're out there, all you can do is feel the tension on your rod tip and you can lift it or sweep it a little bit to the right or to the left to feel that tension on the belly of the line, straighten that line out and get that fly to raise up in the water column. Two simple ways, the initial cast 45 degrees down, no further up, and use the tip of your rod to ensure there's tension on your fly line that will raise that fly up to the surface of the water. After using a wet fly for a while, we decide to try a bomber on the surface. An outright refusal. I don't mind saying, as an angler, this can be incredibly frustrating, but it's all part of the game. As Mitch and I were heading back to the lodge for dinner, we were able to share in the excitement as another guest hooked into her first fish. This is where the skill of the guide comes in, with encouragement and proper instructions on how to fight an Atlantic salmon. The guest was successful, and it was obvious to everyone, she had a total blast. After a great day on the water, we sat down and enjoyed a glass of wine and an amazing dinner prepared by Chef Gary Callahan. And in true Newfoundland form, after dinner, the guitars came out. <music> Equipment for this episode featuring Gander River Salmon and Gander River Outfitters is as follows. I was primarily throwing a 9 foot 8 weight fly rod matched with an 8 weight weight forward floating line. 
Leader material was a 12 foot straight shot of eight pound fluorocarbon. A smooth drag is essential for angling these fish as they can take you for a healthy run. Flies used were as follows. Undertaker, Black Bear Green Butt, Thunder and Lightning, Blue Charm, White Winged Blue Charm, and a variety of personal ties by Mitch Head and Thomas Newman. It's day five and we're out on the water again with head guide Thomas Newman. He suggested we try some deeper and slower moving water. Swinging right between them rocks too. Yeah. When you get, uh, when you get ready. On the far side, you mean where we rose yeah. that one? Yeah, yeah, start like, almost hit that rock with your, yeah, right there. And letting the, uh, letting swing through there too. Yeah, just short and work back a bit. Just missed it. Despite all my efforts, the fish just wouldn't take. Other than the nice rise I had, I came up empty today. Well, that was really interesting to see what happened on the full moon, the highest tide of July. We had a huge push of fish come in on the high tide, plus we had some rain, which increased the amount of fish that came in. But the low water has turn them quite negative. So the guides think that as soon as the water goes up a bit, there's gonna be a flush of fish that run up and new fish will come in and maybe then we'll have a shot at catching some of these fantastic Atlantic salmon. As soon as we headed on the water, Mitch said today felt a little different. He was right, the fish were showing themselves all over the place. Same spot. And I've seen fish when we're coming across there too. Just sitting there. They're not going up through yet. But now I will they take anything? <laughs> Another one back there. I'm getting out, I'm gonna stand Jump up. Jump out if you want, yeah. Another one? Where to? Right in front of that rock. Right here. Right in the slick here. Oh, just right here? Yeah. And just like that, fishing, walk and wade also pays off. Now we've been seeing fish surface in this run here to my left. 
all day, and uh, Mitch figured it was just a matter of time. He put the right thing in front of him, and it was going to happen. And sure enough, we got one. Now, there's a ton of fish in this river right now, like an absolute ton of them. Nice. Good one. Woo -hoo -hoo. A lot of fish in the river, right? Oh, yeah. it's unbelievable to see how many fish are here. Look at how fresh that fish is, hey? Now, we've seen a fresh push of fish come in in the last couple of days. And that is what it's all about. Small grills, but anytime you can catch Atlantic salmon on fly, it's a really good day. All right, we're gonna let this guy go. You can go and get big. After releasing such a great fish, we had a quick bite to eat back at the lodge and then headed out for the evening fish and big hopes of success. Before heading out on the water for my final day of fishing here on the Gander River, I was able to talk with owner of Gander River Outfitters, Matt Romke. So the Gander is a 37 mile long river with over 50 pools. Uh, we typically fish between 10 and 20 of the different pools. So though it's, it's public water, like everywhere is in Newfoundland, there is never an issue finding a place to fish. There's always lots of water, lots of pools, and lots of fish. We do seem to get a lot of novices, uh, but our guides are fantastic, very patient, good teachers, uh, and typically, now with salmon fishing, but typically the novices or beginners always end up getting their first fish. So that's something that since I've owned the lodge that I've noticed is, is kind of unique. I've never seen it anywhere else that I've ever worked that so many First timers come and get their first fish. A lot of times, you know, somebody will fish for two years or three years, four years, and never hook their first salmon, and they come here with us and and get their first fish. So it's it's pretty exciting, more exciting than, you know, it's always exciting when someone gets a salmon, but when you get that person that hooks their very first salmon, it's pretty unique. So we're lucky we have the we have the salmon fishing, but then we also have bear hunting. We have a cast and blast in the spring for baited bear hunts and then Atlantic salmon fishing that we run through June month. And then in the fall, uh, we have moose hunting. The hunters come in for their moose hunt once they harvest their animal. We, uh, we spend the remainder of the week uh, salmon and brook trout fishing, so. Oh, right, so you get coaster brook trout that come in. Yeah, through September. There are a couple of things that have been reinforced to me after fishing with the great guides at uh, Gander River Outfitters. Um, and here they are. Number one is fish short well. The fish could be right here. They could be right at the end of your rod tip. Bring your, your fly line right in and fish as close to you as humanly possible, but fish it well. Number two is when you're stripping line out, Never strip more than just a couple of inches at a time. I've been passing my fly over fish. I know it for a fact. Just take a couple inches at a time. 
cover water well. Number three is when you're making those casts, make sure you're making the appropriate angle cast to keep that line as tight as possible so that you can have a direct connection when that fish eats. And number four, and the most important and arguably the most difficult, is to always pay attention. Always watch your fly, watch the area where your fly may be, because you know the second that you look away to look at that bird or to look at that other feature in the water, that fish is gonna eat. So take those four tips away with you on your next salmon fishing trip, and you will surely find better success. It's important, salmon fishing is fun, but it's hunting, and you really have to pay attention to every move you make. Got him. Nice one too, right? Yep. I didn't see that fish sitting on the uh, on the edge of that drop. And Mitch called it out to me. He said, just a little further, buddy. Keep it going inch by inch and you'll get into his wheelhouse. And sure enough, we did. We got right into this fish's wheelhouse and he came up and porpoised and ate it. Violent strike, huh? Try to come down a bit if you can. Coming across. Watch out for the bow of the boat there because he might get caught up. Oh, he's it. coming back. Okay. Good eyes, man. Good eyes. We've been watching fish jump and porpoise and and uh, and be salmon all day, which means that sometimes they're not the friendliest of animals. They may be around, but you never know if you're going to be able to rope one or not. But we got this one. Coming back over. He wants to go into that fast water, hey? Nice job, <laughs> nice rope. <laughs> I love it when they swim right into that, man. All right, let's take a look at the fly that we caught that great little salmon on. Um, this is a Mitch head tie. It's, um, it's basically an undertaker with a white wing. So it's got a green and red butt with a black body and some gold, some gold wrapping. Uh, Mitch, what size? 12. 12. So we've gone smaller here on, uh, on the gander and um, it's paying off. Yeah. Let's put it back to work, huh? Usually when low water. Low water, smaller flies. Little smaller flies. Good to know. So when you come, check the water conditions and make sure that you have the size of flies to match the water level of the Gander River. Well, this is the part of the story that I hate to tell. All good things must come to an end. I want to take this opportunity to thank Mitch Head and of course Thomas Newman for their expert guidance and of course Matt Romke for hosting us here at Gander River Outfitters. For more on our series, check us out at www.thenewflyfisher.com. My name's Mark Melnick. Remember, adventure is out there. All you need to do is go and find it. And what better way than to do it with a fly rod in your hand? From all of us here at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for watching. And hopefully we'll see you on the Gander River in Newfoundland and Labrador. The New Fly Fisher is supported by Gander River Outfitters. Orvis Fly Fishing, Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada.